how do you make South African farming more sustainable? AgriCarbon, South Africa's first internationally certified carbon program for the agriculture sector, is rewarding farmers with carbon credits for their sustainable practices. Companies in South Africa and abroad can then buy them to offset their own carbon footprints. Dairy farms in particular have long been criticized for releasing large quantities of methane and nitrogen that drive climate change. Lanswood Farm, where Mark Rubin is the owner, is one of 40 South African farms where the agri-carbon scheme is being piloted by the Climate Neutral Group. It has more than halved its nitrogen use per hectare per year since 2018, according to research consultancy Trace and Safe. We've been doing minimum till and we've reduced our nitrogen on the soil for many, many years. And that's how we've reduced the cost on the farm to make our dairy very profitable. Ruben's cows graze on a selection of plants, from chicory to lucerne, that have been planted for feed variety while helping preserve the soil's nutrients. We've always believed that the soil is king and the better you work with nature and uh, the better you work with the soil, you'll get, you'll get the returns from that. Rotational grazing, less tilling and reduced fertilizer use are other ways farmers can improve their sustainability credentials. Climate Neutral Group officials said there could be around 230,000 tonnes worth of carbon credits up for grabs when the first verified batch go on sale later this year. Gray Maguire is the carbon project manager at Climate Neutral Group's South African unit. The reason why the, the, these credits are of really high demand is because of the fact that um, globally there is a process towards uh, becoming net zero within the corporate environment, uh, meaning that uh, corporates around the world are trying to determine pathways where they can manage their emissions both from their own activities but also from within their supply chain. The group is planning similar initiatives for an estimated 33 million smallholder crop and livestock farmers in sub-Saharan Africa with potential projects eyed in Malawi, Morocco, Kenya and Zambia.